From the crossroads of the Ozarks, this is PID Radio. Welcome, I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and we're so glad that you're out there today. Boy, you know what? It's beautiful here in the Ozarks. A little bit cooler weather. Um, Not the best day for a dog to run out and enjoy both yards, but that's that's just here. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Weather-wise, it'd be a great day. It's only supposed to get into the 70s here, which for mid-July in the Ozarks is very, very pleasant. It's pretty crazy. We're we're happy for it, thanking the Lord for it. But as you've probably noticed from our Facebook photos, that uh, we have basement, not basement, we have uh, foundation work going on at our house. Mm -hmm. We're getting to, uh, our good friend Dave James is going to be installing siding, siding that was gifted to us. Yes. Windows that were gifted to us. Mm. Our windows don't open. What a blessing. And our siding, we didn't know that the siding really needed to be replaced. It's old and it's got some holes in a few places, but this was a God thing. Yeah, because as David is a company, by the way, called Christ Powered Construction. You can't beat that. You can't. As he was pulling away the siding and uh, he, he detected other issues that needed to be addressed. Yeah, there was so water getting in one, in, uh, one place that uh, yeah, needed to be addressed. A, a few and, of the concrete blocks that were well, yeah, loose. And, and the concrete and the cinder block foundation, was. it was just a uh, thought, well, okay, if we're going to put darker colored siding up there, let's Paint it paint with some the, dry lock. Yeah, paint it and paint it with dry lock to seal it. And as he got into it, he said, you, you realize in one corner here, you got four blocks where the mortars completely disintegrated. You can actually pull the cinder blocks out. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> we prefer that they be... Uh, yeah, we need a firm foundation. Firm. Yeah. And there, well, many of you have said there's a sermon in it, and there is indeed. Absolutely. And again, we will thank the Lord God Almighty for inspiring our good friend to donate these things to us. This is what he does for a living. He mm-hmm. is a, an avocational pastor, uh, but a uh, daytime job is selling siding and windows. And Mike, you are, you have blessed us in ways that we can never thank you for, but especially because the Lord used your gift to show us that our house was falling down. Well, yeah, uh, not, not quite danger. falling down. But no, actually, it, it's not. These, these were long-term issues that had they gone un checked would have become from now who knows yeah, would have become very obvious yeah so they're being addressed in a timely manner because mm-hmm. uh of the gift because we would not have thought okay should we take x amount of dollars and put new setting in the house nah, never, it's, we never it's probably fine uh, the windows we probably would have replaced a couple eventually, at a time yeah. eventually our bedroom windows especially because they wouldn't open but uh, well the others don't open very well either not very well no and that can be a security issue. I mean, you you never want to think, well, what happens if there's a home fire? Ah, it's probably fine. But if that mm-hmm. one time you need to get out of a room and you can't get to a, through a doorway and you need to go out through a window and you can't well, get the window open, that's, yeah. that becomes and a problem. And if we had a guest, I mean, the guest bedroom, right, they, right. they don't open very easily. The so, dining room doesn't. So anyway, there's that. Yeah. So we thank you for that. We thank the Lord for that. And we know many, many of you have been praying for us and you support us in other ways. And for that, we are eternally grateful we truly are um we know that we're protected because this is just the latest in a series of things that have been discovered before they became much bigger problems yeah uh the the arcing the the scorch marks that were found behind the old box here in the barn when the electrical system was updated yeah the the water in the line going from the barn the electric between the barn and the, the house and Lots the, uh, of things. the lint from the dryer that was blowing into the backside of the fireplace. Yeah, so, and it was yeah. uh, scorched. You could see where right, it had right, burned. Right. So anyway, the Lord has protected us. And again, we we truly appreciate your prayers and support. He protects foolish people. He does. <laughs> and we We're are just going along. Evidence of that. Yeah, happy as Larry, not knowing a thing. Uh, so if you are so inclined, you can uh, donate to us through gilberthouse.org slash donate. We've also got a streaming video site that we keep forgetting to talk about. Uh, you can access it at gilberthouse.org slash video if you want to see our presentations on various and sundry, everything from giants in the Bible, why they matter, the UFO phenomenon, occultism in the 19th century, Jack Mm -hmm. the Ripper, Aleister Crowley, and so on. Those are all available for as little as $2.95 for a a seven-day rental. This includes our travelogue umentaries, our long sort of pseudo-documentary uh, videos of our tours of Israel, Blatherfest of our tours of uh, Israel, and you'll find those all at gilberthouse.org slash video. Well, now that we've reminded you to download the app and to enjoy talking in the, uh, yeah. you didn't mention the conversation area, but it's a wonderful part of the app. I always watch everything on the app mm-hmm. and the, the mobile app, and I 
look in on the uh, the conversations, stop and pray for people. Don't always answer. Try to, but again, I don't like to do typing on my phone. But um, those of you who are active, you've formed a fellowship. You've formed a virtual congregation. Mm-hmm. You are supporting one another, praying for one another, praying with one another. And for that, I am really grateful to the Lord. Yes, it is a, a wonderful place to gather. And that conversation area is offline. So mm-hmm. it's uh, you know, hosted on the Christian by the Christian company that develops the app, a company called Subsplash. And uh, thus, you don't have bots or, uh, or trolls looking in from outside. Mm-hmm. It's contained to this little community. So you can access it through the app, and you can get the app at gilberthouse.org slash app or pidradio.com slash app. Either way. And now, we'll begin with the elephant in the room. And by that, I mean the Republican yeah. in the room and yeah. what happened last Saturday afternoon. After PID Radio went up... Um, Last Saturday, which we normally get out by about noon on Saturdays, of course, last Saturday evening, you know, just after 6 p.m. Eastern time, a uh, 20-year-old named Thomas Matthew Crooks fired, we're we're told now, eight shots Mm. with an AR-15 at uh, President Trump. He was wounded in the ear, um, but uh, a former fire chief, Volunteer fireman in Butler County, Pennsylvania, Corey Comparator, his name, uh, father, his last words uh, to his family, get down, as he covered them to protect them from the bullets, his mm-hmm. wife and his daughter. Um, he was fatally wounded. Two other people whose names I don't know, critically injured, still being treated in local hospitals there. Uh, this has changed the dynamic of the presidential election here in the United States in a very, very dramatic way. The way President Trump responded, I, I suppose former President Trump is correct, but his you know, title President Trump. I think you get Trump, to keep the, the sure. last title yeah, you have. we still call President Obama mm-hmm. as such, President Bush. Yeah. So President Trump, um, when the Secret Service determined it was safe for him to get up again, to defiantly raise his fist and mouth the words, fight, 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 I'll tell you that photo that was captured by the AP photographer with Trump bloodied with his fist raised and the American flag in the background, Mm -hmm. that visual will become, that'll be one of those iconic photos that's printed in books for years. Like, like the photos, for example, uh, Kent state Mm -hmm. or the Marines at Iwo Jima, that, that sort of iconic thing. In fact, it's so iconic that there is a substantial portion of, Voters, most of them Democrat, who think that the whole thing was staged. There was a survey this week that said a third of Democrat voters believe the whole thing was staged to give Trump a boost in the ratings. Tell that to the Comparator family. I mean, that is that is just absolutely repulsive to suggest that it would also suggest that the deep state in D.C., the Secret Service, Department of Homeland Security, want Trump to win. Which is counter, contradicts yeah. everything we've seen regarding the deep state and Donald Trump for the last eight years. It, it really is. So you have to ask, okay, if this were um, planned, mm-hmm. then they assumed it was going to work. Why would you plan something that would guarantee his, almost guarantee his election uh, if you're deep state? It, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. And secondly, the odds of something going horribly wrong Get a 20-year-old shooter who reportedly, according to his classmates from uh, the high school he attended, which is about 40 miles from where the rally was held, he tried out for the competitive shooting team Mm -hmm. in high school, which in just two years, he only graduated in 2020. (laughs) He he didn't make the team because he was such a bad shot. In fact, one of the students said, yeah, as he was trying out, he was in the lane number seven, and I guess these Mm -hmm. ranges where they shoot, they've got eight lanes and so he was in the second to the right or from the right and he hit the left wall (laughs) so let me just raise my hand on this because i I, i'm sorry i don't buy that the guy the only way that he could possibly miss that much Mm -hmm. would be to have somebody hit his gun at the last minute so that it moved well it does seriously yeah yeah or or well yeah i i don't know he has vision problems yeah it it, (sighs) And, and again, you're taking the word of a kid who knew him in high school. Exactly. Years ago. No, I, that sounds like a joke that they all told. But um, 
what what does appear to be true is that he tried out and did not make that team for whatever reason we don't know was it because he was a bad shot because the coach had better shooters because they didn't like him because they didn't like him he appears to have been based on accounts a quiet bookish kid who was bullied Mm -hmm. which uh, is sad it's sad that there are kids who will try to respond to that when they get a little older by saying, well, I'll show them. Mm-hmm. I'll go out in a blaze of glory. Yeah, he's a registered, well, it was, he's passed on because they shot him that day. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a miraculous shot, a one in a million shot, by the way. Because um, it was not the closest anti-sniper shooter. No. Who took him out. It was 400 yards away. 400 yards away, right. There were not just two snipers, there were four counter snipers who were deployed at the rally, two local police. And according to reports, the two who were closer, when the first, when, when Crooks uh, trigger mm-hmm. f- first shot, f- can, they kind of flinched, which trained snipers are not Don't. supposed to do. When you hear a gunshot, you're not supposed to flinch because you, you flinch, you miss. And right. apparently the barrel on the guns, according to observers who watched the video, uh, on those snipers who were only about 150 yards from Crooks, flinched and missed it was the guy who the secret service counter sniper who was uh, uh the one who actually took the shot at that uh, neutralized crooks so as you say it was a miraculous shot yeah and, and that's what those guys are trained for but the questions that need to be answered are why it took so long why they waited until he shot because we now know that uh, crooks was identified as a person of interest mm-hmm. somebody who needed to be attended to more than an hour, 62 minutes to be exact, yeah. before he fired the shot. Um, this, this has been extensively covered elsewhere. Yeah, you've probably seen some meme <clears throat> posters at a X and at Facebook um, looking at the slope of a roof. Yeah. Which apparently was floated out there as the reason why no one went up there. Yeah. Because the, who could possibly go up there? The, the head of the Secret Service, mm. uh, who is... Uh, a, a woman, and I'm looking up her name now because I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, she was the one who came up with that, uh, that uh, Kimberly Cheadle is her name. She uh, said that we didn't have anyone posted on that roof because the roof was too sloped. But the, the, why, there, there should have been somebody securing that building to make sure that nobody was, I mean, the kid put a ladder up against the building and he climbed did. up there. He managed it. <laughs> I've even seen video of a cow on a sloped roof <laughs> so it it could have and should have been done local police were using that building as a command center they were inside of it and yeah. apparently local police were also aware of what was going on so this there are a lot of questions and i'm sure that they will be addressed over the next few weeks um, but the bottom line is that trump has gone way up in the esteem of the republican party which is why it's the elephant in the room right yeah, about 73% of Republicans are, are behind Donald Trump right now. Uh, you've still got the, the few rhinos or uh, never Trump Republicans, mm-hmm. guys like, uh, oh, the old uh, National Review guy. Um, oh. Um, I can see his face, but I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Chris, Bill Christopher? B- Bill, uh, uh, is that Christopher or William Crystal, Bill Crystal. Crystal, that's yeah. it, yes. Yeah. The one who was for, one of the founders of Project for a New American Century. Yeah, yeah. So guys like him, uh, Washington Post columnist Max Boot, who's a neocon, I people like that. But most, most Republicans are firmly in Trump's camp right now. Uh, is Bill Crystal one of the signers to the Project 2025 uh, paper? I don't know. Project 2025 is being used as sort of a, 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 a boogeyman right now yeah, by yeah. Democrats, and they're trying to tie Trump to it, even though Trump has disavowed any connection to it. He says, you know, I, I didn't, I, you know I'm not behind it. I, I don't even know what's in there. Yeah, the claim is that it smacks of dominionism, smacks of, uh, hey, we want a Christian the theocracy in place in Washington. No, there's nothing there. Well, I think that the paper actually is trying to do is get rid of the swamp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there are a lot of things in there that uh, liberals are in favor of. Yeah. Like continuing full support for Ukraine and things like uh-huh. that. So, yeah, it, they're looking for something to get, gain some traction because right now Joe Biden is, is floundering. 
his campaign. He's sheltering in place. Yeah, he came down with COVID. That's tested what they COVID, say. They say. So he's back in in Delaware, apparently trying to run another campaign from his basement. I don't think it'll work this time. No. The, the pressure on him to step aside is growing. You've got very prominent Democrats now who are just coming out and openly saying, he can't win. He needs to. He needs to go. President Obama. Has Reportedly said he behind needs the scenes. To, yes. Yeah. But there are those who've said so openly, like um, Adam Schiff. He, he's a congressman from California. He's not the most truthful person, but he does seem to be a pretty reliable indicator of the official deep state narrative. So yeah, that's true. When you've lost Adam Schiff as a Democrat, you are in trouble. Wasn't Schiff uh, hoping to get? Um, oh gosh, the, the senatorial. Yeah. He, he ran for Senate. But the one who just passed away. Yeah. Diane Feinstein. Yeah. Feinstein. Yeah. Has yeah. she passed away? Yeah. That's what I thought. And I thought Schiff thought that he was going to get, cause Newsom would have been the one to appoint it. Mm-hmm. So I, uh, oh, Megan Markle thought she was going to get it. <laughs> Reportedly she was calling a uh, Newsom many times a day and he finally blocked her phone call yeah um she she is uh, like like many on the left yeah not not operating in in reality uh you know it's interesting uh for so many for so long the democratic senators from california were um feinstein and um who's he Uh, no no, not waters but who who is the other woman uh (laughs) <laughs> nouns escaping me uh proper names yeah but uh, right now uh it's uh, alex padilla and lafonza butler are the two senators mm. from california um there was one woman who just it wasn't waters it was uh who just passed away uh sheila jackson lee of texas yes. yeah just passed away uh just yesterday, age 74, she had been diagnosed in, in June with pancreatic cancer. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on. Um, when you take the final breath, mm-hmm. you either know Jesus or he knows you or he doesn't. Mm-hmm. You know him or you don't. There is not an in-between. It is binary. Mm-hmm. It is yes or no. Right. That's yep. the essence of free will. Simple. Uh, yes, no answer, which means that people can have a lot of divergent views underneath those general headings. So mm-hmm. there'll probably be a lot of people in glory. That is true. That uh, we, <laughs> we are surprised to see there. Well, speaking of binary, mm-hmm. we're getting into computer language. C++, in fact, not A++++++, mm-hmm. which was written in A Christmas Story. <laughs> But C++, which is a, a computer language, and apparently the uh, software from CrowdStrike is written in C++. And I saw a wonderful breakdown today of what most likely happened, leading to a null error message, yeah. which when, uh, according to this, if I understand it correctly, whenever you have a call to go to a certain area on a drive that essentially doesn't exist, a mm-hmm. zero address, the software from Microsoft kicks it out. And boy, did it. Yeah, it uh, resulted in the blue screen of death for, well... <laughs> a lot of the world. A lot of the world. It was not a, uh, it was not a good thing, um, as we saw airlines all over the place. In fact, a number of major airports here in the United States were completely shut down. LaGuardia mm-hmm. in New York, Logan in mm-hmm. Boston... Some are still catching up today because when you have that many flights that suddenly are canceled, then as you know, if you've ever flown and your flight is canceled, then you have to figure out a way to take another plane. Mm -hmm. And those planes were already filled for the most part. Right. So it has a domino effect. Uh, But yes, the idea that the C++ call for a location that didn't exist, Microsoft software all around the world Mm -hmm. said, no, we're not doing that, kicked it out. And Elon Musk has said, look, I'm, I took all of that software off my servers. It is not going to be, CrowdStrike is out. Mm-hmm. Here's the weird thing about CrowdStrike. Because a lot of shares have been sold mm-hmm. over the last year at CrowdStrike. 
Yeah. In, in other words, employees of CrowdStrike selling them. Yeah. Selling suddenly selling, shares. but here's the thing. They sell and don't buy. Yeah. So it's not so much that it, based on what I, I could find out this morning, it's not so much that they were saying, I'm going to sell at a high. And then when I see it go down low again, mm-hmm. I'll buy. We'll see if they're buying now. Yeah. Because it is low. It's down about 12%. Mm-hmm. CrowdStrike really seems to have come out of nowhere. The company was only founded in 2011. So it, uh, it, it kind of begs the question, where did they, how, how did they become so embedded in our society? I mean. In 13 years. It, it, 13 years. Yeah. Um, their first, the, the product that, that failed, which is the Falcon um, antiviral scanner, antivirus mm-hmm. scanner, was launched in 2013. 13, ah. yeah. But, uh, again, how, how did it in, in so so quickly push out of the way older and, and more established cybersecurity um, companies like Norton and McAfee? Well, I think that's a very good question. It's just like when the pandemic struck in 2019 and the world began to lock down in 2020, how is it that Zoom suddenly came out of nowhere? I'd never heard of Zoom until that year. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly everyone was using it. Skype was gone. We were all Zooming. Yeah. Getting people, uh, Skyping is still a thing, but mm-hmm. suddenly everybody was using Zoom. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, there, there's always a suspicion when you see something like that. It wasn't because the product was necessarily better, but just that the guys behind the product had better connections. Opportunistic. Um, I did some research i know you did as well on crowd strike this morning and i was curious to know who held the most shares Mm -hmm. guess who it is Uh, (laughs) well i know the answer yeah black rock and some other very prominent uh, venture capital firms Mm -hmm. too like state street vanguard yeah biggies uh well you know apparently someone looked at it and said okay this is where we're we're putting all of our eggs uh, IT eggs. You're making a. Yeah, I was making a face because I went to my Wikipedia app here just to bring up some basic details about CrowdStrike. And when I put CrowdStrike in the search box, it said no results found. <clears throat> yeah, right. Yeah, uh, apparently because I didn't capitalize the S in strike. That's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. No, no, no that is ridiculous. Seriously, because on I agree. the actual browser page, not the app, mm-hmm. doesn't matter. Yeah. Case sensitive since when? Since when? Yes. Anyway. Yeah. Well, we don't want you to find that. This uh, w- was founded back in 2011. The company founded in 2011 by George Kurtz, who was formerly with McAfee mm-hmm. as their chief technology officer. He actually founded the company um, called Found Stone that was purchased by McAfee and rolled into McAfee's antivirus software. Found Stone? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's not BlackRock. <laughs> Um, but if the name CrowdStrike sounds familiar, it's because it was involved in the Russia, Russia, Russia collusion hoax. Mm -hmm. Back in 2016, CrowdStrike, which was a contractor of the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign, investigated the leak of the DNC emails, which showed that Hillary Clinton and the DNC had colluded to squeeze Bernie Sanders out of the nomination for president. Mm -hmm. The Sanders was really the most popular of the candidates running back in 2016. He had a lot more groundswell support than Hillary did, but Hillary had determined that she was going to be the nominee. And uh, in fact, that, that scandal that resulted from the leak of the DNC emails led the former DNC chair, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, to resign. They didn't, you know, they apologized to Sanders, but they didn't give him the nomination. Mm. But CrowdStrike, the, the official story is, and, and the reason the name came to light is because Donald Trump, after becoming president, on a phone call to Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, asked him to look into CrowdStrike because CrowdStrike had reportedly determined that the emails had been hacked by Russian hackers or Russian intelligence and then leaked to help Donald Trump's political 
campaign, his presidential campaign. Trump wanted Zelensky to ask because he thought that perhaps there was a connection to uh, some oligarchs in Ukraine that CrowdStrike might have been connected to. Uh, that probably not the case. But what we know, thanks to investigative work by a, a website called the Conservative, no, it's called the Last Refuge. But the website, the web address is theconservativetreehouse.com. Uh, yeah. Kind of a goofy URL. But they really do some deep investigative diving into the political, political intrigues here in the United States. And they showed a couple of things. First of all, uh, it was that phone call that led to Trump's first impeachment. Because you remember, they claimed he was trying to influence a foreign government for his own personal benefit. Oh, hold on. <laughs> yeah. That's been done. That's been done. Over and over again. Biden and son. Right. Biden openly saying, hey, uh, you know, fire that prosecutor. You don't get the $2 billion or, yeah. or whatever the loan was. I mean, he actually said this. It's caught. It's been released. It's out there in the wild. Mm -hmm. But this is typical for what Trump has been enduring the last eight years. Democrats, liberals projecting onto him the things that they are doing or want to do and then prosecuting him for it. Mm -hmm. So anyway, CrowdStrike came up in that conversation. Again, the official narrative from dhs and their cybersecurity, the fbi was that yeah the russians did it because crowdstrike found that it was the russians who did it but it came out in under questioning before congress that uh, the fbi and the doj never actually read the crowdstrike report <clears throat> they never saw it mm -hmm. so that's, that's too where hard. crowdstrike came out but again remember that crowdstrike was a contractor for the dnc TLDR. and for yeah and, and for the hillary clinton campaign but that gets back to the original question. How'd they get so big so fast? If they only launched the Falcon anti-cybersecurity uh, software, its antiviral scanner, mm -hmm. in 2013, how'd they, were they providing the, these services to the Democratic National Committee within three years? Well, let me just say this. BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street are the big three. Yes. They hold all, almost, they, well, the majority, but most of the world's shares. Mm-hmm. They're huge. Yes. BlackRock manages $10 trillion yeah. of assets. Mm -hmm. $10 trillion. For, for comparison, the, the gross domestic product of the United States is about $19 trillion. All economic activity, including government spending, mm -hmm. which why that's part of GDP, I don't know. But anyway, GDP. Well, that makes no sense. It wouldn't be that. If, <laughs> no. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's government. why they don't want the government, you know, reduced in size. Our GDP is going to go Our down. GDP would go down. So $19 trillion, all economic activity in the United States in a given year. BlackRock managing $10 trillion of assets. BlackRock being, and those three, being mm -hmm. the majority shareholders in CrowdStrike. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hmm. Now here's another weird thing. Beginning a few years ago, 2015 or so, we started to see... People like Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab begin to talk about a cyber pandemic mm -hmm. when something would happen to one series of servers or computers and then infect others and then mutate mm -hmm. and infect yet others and eventually shut down the world. Yeah. And I thought, boy, hmm, that almost happened yesterday. Yeah, and it wasn't a virus. We need to be, we need no, to be no, clear. no, the, it was the, just bad writing. Right. Bad coding. The, uh, CrowdStrike pushed out an update to its Falcon antivirus software, mm -hmm. and the update caused the glitch. Yes, exactly. Had a hacker done something similar mm -hmm. with a program that then went in and wrote, rewrote some of your code to say the following, mm -hmm. to have a, a null address. And then that was spread to others, and then to others, and then beyond. Remember Stuxnet? Yeah. That was installed in Iran with a drive, a portable drive. And somehow it got into the wild, and it got adapted and mm. changed, as did Promise Software. Wow. Yeah. That's going back to the 1980s I now. know. It's P-R-O-M-I-S, and mm -hmm. it goes way back to... Gosh, 
uh, Rakana Shudo and the Cabazon Indian. Uh, the Reagan administration. Yeah, so many uh, high weirdness things that were taking Attorney place. Attorney General Ed Meese. Yep. You can do a search at PID Radio. There's a search bar there. If you want to search Promise, P-R-O-M-I-S. We've done full programs on this in the past and don't mm. have all that information up right now. And so many of the details have oh, now we so, so long ago forgotten lost it, in the mists of me. time. But uh, it, that is a big, big event. It, yes. we, we did talk about it again recently with that three-part Netflix documentary. We did. The, the octopus murders. Yes, we did. So you can look for that as well. Um, bottom line. Our suggestion, at least mine is, and I think you agree, is keep some cash. One of the areas that was affected by this were credit card processing and debit mm-hmm. card processing services. So there were um, a lot of businesses that were suddenly. It will uh, take cash only. Cash they were only. literally saying cash has, there's been an effort to just get rid of cash. Mm-hmm. And there are even some really big banks that don't want to take cash deposits. Right. Yeah, we've seen this. There's a major bank in Australia that's announced that by this fall, they will no longer be taking cash. I'm betting they changed their minds on that, at least for now, because mm-hmm. a lot of banks were affected. Right. Try doing a transaction, you know, when they're shut down. Yeah. ATMs, so, shut down. ATMs shut down. Banks shut down. Um, try to again, get gas. Try to buy groceries. Airlines not able to process tickets. I saw mm-hmm. somebody on X post a photo of a handwritten boarding pass mm-hmm. that they had to get at the Mumbai airport. Yeah. Um, b- besides Logan and um, LaGuardia, uh, Mitchell Airfield in Milwaukee was shut down. Harry Reid in Las Vegas. Other airports all over. Well, here's again, my question: micro- Running Microsoft, blue screen of death. Does, did it go beyond transactions? Did it also get into FAA? Um, that's a really good question. It's, that's possible. FAA software, mm-hmm. uh, in other words, air traffic control. Exactly. I, d- I don't know. I know that hospitals, there was a hospital chain in Northern Germany had to reschedule elective surgeries because mm-hmm. their, their software was, was offline. Well, you they want were doing software to things. tell you exactly what it is you're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. We know that this, you know, um, tumor is here or this has to be, there have been terrible stories over the many, many decades of mm-hmm. someone going on in for an appendectomy and having something entirely different done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't want those kind of mistakes. You really do not. We so, yep. Crazy. are so dependent on our electronic brains and they are so interconnected that this, this update knocked out, this is being described as the, the biggest IT failure in in world history and i've not i've been searching while you've been talking here trying to find an estimate for the economic impact and we don't know um i don't think they're going to have be able to tell for the next few weeks there will be probably some sort of investigation into exactly what happened who do we whom do we blame okay fall guy (laughs) you out the door yeah I'm just the janitor. <laughs> well, it is uh, just a reminder that a day is coming when our reliance on the internet will uh, will come back to bite us. So, well, as you say, just as as a simple preparation. Number one, always keep cash on hand. Number two, get paper books, especially of your research materials and your Bible. Yep, and and another thing too is get in the habit of periodically routinely once a week or whatever do a screen cap of your bank account oh. you're online oh not a I bad used to idea. do that all the time huh huh not that way if idea. they if it ever goes down you can say this was the last time mm-hmm. now if you download your statements at least you would have that but it, you know you may have deposits that went in other uh, transactions that went in since your last statement so be able to tell your bank if everything fails yeah the day is coming when there would be a great reset, so to speak. Right. Oh, that's, I'll coin that. Great reset. How about that? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, How about great, greater reset? Yeah. yeah the Lord returns. Here, I here's love the, that. No, let me finish. The okay. day is coming when that will happen, and we have to be ready for it, because it isn't if it will happen, it's, it's when. when it will happen. Mm-hmm. One question here, and this is similar to the, the big question that needs to be answered regarding the uh, attempt on, on Trump's life. Are we... Is it plausible that they're really that incompetent? 
No, that is a good question. Because you would think that before they pushed out this update, they had tested it internally on a machine that was not connected to the internet. Well, you would think so, because apparently when you're writing new, new code, that's put in there as part of your test. Mm-hmm. I, would, I would recommend, again, go to my X account, and uh, a few posts down, you will find this long thread, because you can only post so many characters. So there's a long thread where this gentleman goes into the explanation for what happened. And it, again, most of it went over my head, but there was enough in there that I understood that, okay, apparently blue screen of death happened because you want me to do what? I'm sorry, I have to kick you out now. Mm -hmm. We can't have that. Well, before we go to break, just want to really sort of say one last thing about this. And that is that the DOD, our Pentagon, was going to have a one-stop shop for their cloud storage. That Hmm. contract was to be awarded a few years ago to one company. Do you Mm -hmm. remember that? Yeah. Well, a few years ago, they did award the contract, but they split it into four companies. Apparently, there was enough uh, screaming about that idea. Don't put all those eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. So Google, Oracle, Microsoft, and Amazon share responsibility for the Pentagon's $9 billion contract. Hmm. They're building a cloud computing network. Now, I'll just give you this little tease. If you are going to be in um, the, at the Go Therefore conference next weekend, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm going to be uh, reading a short story to you. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you a story that uh, looks into this idea. In fact, uh, part of the short story opened up our opens up our uh, book, The Gates of Hell, which will be released later this year. October fifteenth, we hear. Oh, yeah, 10, earlier 15. than I thought. Yeah, going to be ten thirteen. Oh, that'd Should be, be ten thirteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, an important date in my novel, The God Conspiracy. Oh, yeah, the date when our stuff blows up. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, it's. Um, very, very interesting. And we, we talk a little bit more about that, uh, or we can move on to some other things. I think so we need to take a break things. and then come back. We, we do. Uh, the, uh, the imminent collision between the green agenda and the need for more AI. Mm. Where will it get the power for all them servers? And the Knesset, Israel's legislature says no Palestinian state, not now, not ever yep no green agenda for them either because yes. green is the color that they use mm-hmm. for more ahead on pid radio giants gods dragons they're all real we may not see them with our natural eyes but their handiwork is evident in what's happening in the world around us the spiritual warfare taking place it is so true it's obvious in israel but Worldwide, historically, we've seen this happen. And we want you to get excited about the Old Testament and the New and the giants, gods, and dragons within it because your kids need this information. So do you. Yes. We're living in prophetic times. Help make sense of it with our special offer through July. Our book, Giants, Gods, and Dragons, which takes a fresh look at end times prophecy. My book's Bad Moon Rising about the spiritual forces behind Islam and Last Clash of the Titans, the overlap between what we were told is Greek mythology and the Bible, and our DVD based on the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. All of this, an $80 value for just $45 plus shipping and handling. Now through July, only at our online store, gilberthouse.org slash store. Hi friends, Pastor Mike Spalding here to announce the Go Therefore 2024 conference. We will gather Friday and Saturday, July the 26th and 27th at Harvest Revival Center in Brookville, Ohio. This year we welcome the following scholars, Bible teachers and researchers, Derek and Sharon Gilbert, Joe Horn, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Judd Burton, Pastor Paul Begley, Pastor Carl Gallops, Dr. Greg Reed, Tom Dunn, and Dr. Sherry Tenpenny will be doing a book signing for her new book, Walking with God. Live stream is available. Ministry tables are available for like-minded ministries. 
hotel, and other information is on the conference website, www.gothereforeconference.com. Gothereforeconference.com. Looking forward to seeing you. Shall we begin? Welcome back to PID Radio. I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert. And speaking of Israel, we want to remind you we are going back to Israel in March of next year. March of next year, yes. March 25th through April 3rd, the dates. This will be our full tour. Uh, again, this is that's the plan. Things could that change, things will but be peaceful that's by then. The plan. Yep. So you can find out more. Our special guests joining us, Timothy Alberino, Dr. Judd Burton, and uh, Doug Van Dorn, author of Giants, Sons of the Gods. Uh, Tim Alberino with his wonderful book, Birthright. Judd Burton, author of Interview with the Giant, Ethno-Historical Notes on the Nephilim. Yeah, some interesting thinkers joining us. This will be a rolling tour through the Holy Land, a rolling conference through the Holy Land. So much fun. And by the way, we are also going back in November. Yes, we have made the decision we're going to do another solidarity tour, solidarity mission. Um, This will be a one-week tour, which will focus on Jerusalem, the area around it. We'll visit uh, Tel Aviv. I'm sure we'll visit the uh, Shiva Rehabilitation Hospital, visit with uh, wounded IDF soldiers again. We'll go to Hostage Square in Tel Aviv, of course. And then down in the south, the Nova Music Festival site, um, probably Sterot once again, the site of that police station that was the scene of a, just an intense oh, yeah. battle. Possibly al um, and other places. We, we will go to the Temple Mount. We'll go to the, the what we believe is the true crucifixion site and also the true burial site because we're hoping by then, praying by then, that uh, the Church of the Paternoster will be open. It's yes. Been going through renovations. And uh, maybe one or two other surprises, but uh, this will be a powerful tour. If you want to get an idea of, of um, what it will be like, I featured some video and images around a one-hour talk that I mm-hmm. gave for Hear the Watchman on the uh, View from the Bunker podcast a few weeks back. And I'll link to that in the show notes so you can uh, take a look at that if you're interested. But uh, uh, don't wait. We'll have information up today because this decision just made within the last few days. But this information will go up today at our website, gilberthouse.org slash travel. Uh, information about the tour next spring is also there, gilberthouse.org slash travel. Yep, and we'll also tell you about more of the places we're going to be at the end of this study, the end of this program. Yes. Well, um, speaking of Israel, maybe just stick on this for a little bit. There was an interesting resolution passed by the Knesset this past week. Yeah, I was surprised that they actually actually voted on it. Didn't they actually vote? They did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to say, well, we should probably do this. Let's all sign. Well, a few of us will sign. They voted on it. There, there was a letter that had been signed, but then they went back and they got a resolution. 63 members of the Knesset, which is a majority, uh, but they're from nine different political parties that represent 80 members of Knesset. So mm-hmm. you're looking at about a two-thirds majority who expressed the sense of the Knesset that there should never be a Palestinian state. Since October 7th, the percentage of Israeli Jews who make up about 70% of the population of Israel who thought that there could someday be a peaceful coexistence with a Palestinian state inside Judea and Samaria, the area the world calls the West Bank, has dropped from a slight majority down to about... um, Gosh, 25% or 20%, 80% of Israeli Jews who make up 70% of Israel no longer believe it is possible to live peacefully with the Arabs inside their borders, inside the Palestinian control. Now, there are plenty of Arabs inside Israel proper, about 2 million. So that's about 20% of the population of Israel is Arab. And there are cities that are majority Arab, uh, Nazareth, for example. And every time we've gone to Israel, we've stayed multiple days in Nazareth each time. So Israel does coexist with Arab neighbors in many parts of the country. It's just the areas under the control of the of Fatah, the Palestinian Authority, or Hamas, that refuse to live side by side with Jews. Well, let me read something from Obadiah that I think is interesting when it comes to the Hashemite kingdom, mm. Edom. Verse 10, Obadiah 1. Because of the violence you did to your close relatives in Israel, you will be filled with shame and destroyed forever. When they were invaded, you stood aloof, refusing to help them. 
Foreign invaders carried off their wealth and cast lots to divide up Jerusalem, but you acted like one of Israel's enemies. Hmm. This was during the uh, a reference to how Edom... First century, wasn't it? No, no. It was during the, the conquest by the Chaldeans. Oh, that's the right. Yes, the, yes. E- the Edomites took part and uh, assisted, even though Edom was also conquered by Babylon at that same time. But Edom and Moab, which is part of it, it's essentially in that same region. Mm-hmm. Petra is there, by the way. Yeah. There are passages that indicate that it moab will be moab moab we call it pronounce it usually will be spared for a time so i think this is an already but not yet because edom has not been fully punished mm-hmm. and the hashemite kingdom jordan controls the temple mount right hashemite is uh for those who've heard the term, not familiar with it, it, it's the eponymous, which means the guy for whom the family was named. Right. Hashim was the great grandfather of the prophet Muhammad. Which, of course, Hashem is the name. The name, yeah, what Mm -hmm. Jews call Yahweh. And when I say prophet Muhammad, by the way, just assume that the word prophet is in air quotes. Right. He heard from something, but it was not an angel of God. He heard from Muhammad. Yeah. Yeah, somebody. He, He heard from Jibril claiming to be Gabriel, but it was not... It was not. Sorry, you ain't Gabriel. Yeah, he heard from something, but it was not uh, an angel loyal to God. The the Hashemites, a hundred years ago, so in the 1920s, were working with the Brits. Uh, during World War I, they worked with the British to remove the Ottoman control over Mesopotamia. So everything from uh, Egypt to, well, Egypt was, was kind of outside the Ottoman control at that point. But uh, Syria, Jordan, what we today on today's map, Syria, Jordan, Israel, Lebanon, Iraq, all of that was under Turkish control, the Ottoman Empire. The Arab tribes allied themselves with the British because the Ottomans were allies of uh, Austria, Hungary, and Germany in World War I. Mm-hmm. So th- this war stretched from France to Baghdad, basically, to Iraq. It, it covered everything in there. The Arabs were supported in a rebellion against the Ottoman Turks by the Brits. The leader of the Arabs at the time was a fellow named Hussein, Sharif Hussein. He was the Sharif of Mecca. The Hashemites had ruled Mecca since the 10th century. And again, these are believed to be the direct linear descendants of Muhammad. When World War I was over and Mesopotamia was divided up by the British and the French and the Italians, the Arabs had been promised independence and there were essentially three kingdoms split out. Arabia went to the eldest son, Ali bin Hussein. Mm -hmm. The second son, whose name was uh, Abdullah, became the king of the Transjordan, which Mm -hmm. is now Jordan. And the third son, Faisal, became king of Iraq. That uh, line was ended in the 1950s when there was a military coup in Iraq, which is why you've got uh, the government there. Uh, In Arabia, the kingdom only lasted until 1925 when Ibn Saud conquered Mecca and Mm -hmm. he took over as the king. Dave's at the door. Oh, come on in. Well, we just took a really quick break, uh, paused because David came in again from uh, (laughs) Christ-powered construction and he asked that we all pray because he's about to use a machine to pull our very, very, very heavy wooden deck Mm -hmm. away from the back of our house so that he can access it and make sure that we don't have major moisture damage. Yeah, yeah. A long story there, but just let's say that, uh, (laughs) that he's noticed some, he needs to get in there and dig more of the trench to get at the footer of the foundation. So... We prayed. We asked that you would pray as well. Um, I know I, the Lord is out of space and time. Mm-hmm. He is always now. It's always present time. So I'm a firm believer that you can be listening to this a year from now. And if you pray, the Lord knew you were going to pray, and he honors it. Amen. So Amen. there you go. So, yeah, it's uh, ex- exciting around here. And, of course, the dogs are letting David know that... Uh, they they know that he's there. Hey, that's our deck. Yeah. So, 
Uh, obstacles. Obstacles. But well, again, yes, indeed. Again, better better that he find what he's found now rather than later when the deck just kind of falls away from the house. Yes, yeah, indeed. Well, back to Israel. Yeah. We know that the Knesset has just voted and said, "Look, we are just simply not going to divide into two countries." Right. So, uh, anyway, just to wrap Which is up why the I story. Got to dividing. Right. And by and this to just wrap up the whole thing about the Hashemites. Because they're all um, going. What happened there, with the Hashemites? There, were, there were three branches of the Hashemite family, Hussein's three sons mm-hmm. divided Arabia, Jordan, and Iraq. Uh, the Arabians fell under the control of the Saud, the House mm-hmm. of Saud, Ibn which is Saud. why it's now Saudi Arabia yep. since 1925. The uh, Iraqi military took out the uh, successor to Faisal in, in Iraq in 1955, I think it was. But the King of Jordan, King Abdullah, who's reigned there since 1999, he is still uh, on the throne mm-hmm. and still the lone successor now to the, the line Hashemites. of Muhammad, the Hashemites. Mm-hmm. And the Hashemites still control the Temple Mount, which was a decision made by Moshe Dayan in 1967 when Jewish forces, the Israeli forces, the IDF, took the Temple Mount in the Six-Day War. He was, like many early settlers in Israel, a product of socialist Jews who moved in from Russia or Eastern Europe or whatever, very secular, and Mm -hmm. he just thought, okay, well, there's historical interest for the Temple Mount, but not much else. So if we let the Muslims have access to it, we let the Christians, it'll be fine. No, it's just made nobody happy. And that speaking of the coming conference next weekend in, in uh, Brookville, Ohio, outside Dayton, um, my presentation is going to be on this. And I am learning as I'm doing some reading, mm-hmm. and you could, there, there are many books that have been written about this period of history, but between 19... 19- 15 really and israel's independence in 1948 there was meeting after meeting after conference after commission after report after suggestion after rebellion after just the the whole area was in turmoil and there were recommendations going back to 1936 that that palestine as it was known then be divided between a jewish state and arab state and an ind- an international zone mm-hmm with international control over Jerusalem and Bethlehem, the holy sites, which again, made nobody happy. The United Nations Partition Plan of 1947 was accepted reluctantly by the Jewish Agency for Palestine. Like, well, okay, it's not what we were promised in 1917 or 1920 or 1922, but we'll, we'll take it as a first step. The Arabs rejected it outright, said no. No, we do not want to live with Jews, and so we, and that resulted in war between 1947 and 1949. Hey, my hand up, Mr. Gilbert. Yes, Mrs. G. Just want to let all of you who are going to the conference know, Derek is scheduled to speak before the dinner hour on Friday the 26th. Mm, mm -hmm. Might want to bring dinner with you. Uh I'm going to try to keep it to an hour. So this will no, be. No, like, I know that. Yeah. It's just that there is a lot of information. Yeah. And it's very easy to go over when you have a lot of information. Yeah. There will not be time for more than just a surface level analysis of all of these different conferences. But a lot of these I had not heard of until, until I started digging into it. Uh, mm-hmm. I had not heard of the San Remo Declaration, which was a precursor. It was after. The Paris Peace Conference in 1919, 1920, Mm -hmm. they said, okay, we'll give uh, Israel, we'll give the Jews everything from the Mediterranean to what is now Jordan. And then that was taken away by the League of Nations Charter in 1922. I know. I'm smiling because you're already going into this long, excited list of things you've discovered. And I love it. You and I have talked a lot about this over the last few weeks. It's research I do for the Red Wing Saga because Mm -hmm. as I write books 10, 11, and 12, all of that takes place in there. <laughs> so I've had to read yeah. a lot of stuff too, but I get it. So I've just, just word up, Yeah, have snacks with you just in case. <laughs> now my talk is right, is on Saturday morning. It's right before Dr. Tenpenny. I am not going to go over. I may actually be slightly short, mm, mm-hmm. which I think is an advantage because sure. Sherry Tenpenny is a friend of ours and I look forward to hearing all that she has to say. Absolutely. And by saying her name, I've just got it canceled. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
which means download the app. Yeah, download our app, bypass the gatekeepers. So there, there's a lot going on there um, at the conference. There will be a lot of information with the, the speakers. We'll talk more about that at the end of this podcast. But the, the bottom line is what happened in the, the post-World War I, even during World War I, was fulfillment of prophecy. Yes. I think those who are claiming that Israel is not the real Israel, is not the prophesied restoration of Israel to the land. Look, even in the prophecies of the day of the Lord, it's clear that Israel is not in for a good time. No. When you read Zechariah 12, Zechariah 14, um, I, I don't understand the logic behind the belief that Israel has to be um, restored in a way that is consistent with uh, our, our beliefs as Christians, because obviously Jews are Jews because they have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, but it, the prophecy in Zechariah 12 is clear that a day is coming where they will look on, the Lord says, they will look on me, on him whom they have pierced and mourn. Um, and as Paul writes in Romans chapter 11, that God is not rejected the people that he chose, whom he foreknew. Mm -hmm. So th there's still a day coming when Israel will play a key role in the end times. And my purpose at, at my talk is just to, show that there were a lot of moving parts that had to come together and the fact that Israel came to be in, this, in the face of really intense opposition is miraculous. The thing about conspiracy theories is that um, they're usually distilled down into one or two sentences that a person can hang his, his or her head on and say, that's what's wrong with the world. Mm -hmm. It's because of this, this, or this, this, or this, or that, or, or them. them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the fact is the world's very, very complicated. Yeah. And you have to be willing to read a lot of books, read a lot of scripture mm -hmm. in order to unpack what's actually taking place historically. And then you have to dig behind and look at the spiritual war behind all of that. Mm -hmm. Theopolitics. Theopolitics is really what we need to be studying. Well, um, we're going to answer a question from the app. Yeah, and we, we will. I want to mention one thing only because I teased it. Oh, okay. And, and that is simply this. The um, power drain or demands. Oh, yes, you did. I forgot about of that. Artificial intelligence. That's why I made a note here because otherwise I would have forgotten too. That um, the, the demands of artificial intelligence are, such, are, are so intense. The processing power needed for things like chat GPT or uh, what's the other one that called us a conspiracy? A Claude. Oh, yeah. yeah. Claude is, is another um, yeah, chat Well, there are lots of AI them. They, they are all lot think of them that we're there. French. Yeah. But uh, the, the demand for those services, and there are others like MidJourney, which are AI-powered mm -hmm. graphic generators, mm -hmm. and, and other AIs that, that are powering things, you know, Siri, Alexa, whatever. And there are some that will do films, videos, and they look very, very real, mm -hmm. frighteningly real. So energy companies are trying to figure out how to supply the electricity needed by these artificial intelligence processing farms. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's gone so far. I mean, the demands are so intense that the, the power companies are even, even considering things that would have been considered absolutely unthinkable even a few years ago. They're, they're thinking about and exploring whether it's possible to restart Three Mile Island at Harrisburg, what? Pennsylvania. Yeah. You ever hear the China Syndrome, the movie with Jack Lemmon? The Ch there was the meltdown there at Three Mile Island. They're, they're looking, okay, is that, is that possible? That, that plant has been shut down since 1979, uh -huh. the accident there. But the it's electrical It's like grid, saying, let's, let's restart uh, Chernobyl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 15 U.S. states contain 80% of the data centers in the U.S. And in Virginia... 20, more than 25% of the electricity is consumed by data centers. Not very green, is it? Well, that's the thing. How can you accommodate that? And Bitcoin farming, mm -hmm. which now um, consumes about 3% of American electricity, but by the year 2030, is supposed to be up to 8% mm -hmm. as Bitcoin farms are moving from China. China outlawed them in 2021. Mm -hmm. So between Bitcoin farming and the growing demand for AI processing capacity 
while at the same time we're trying to achieve net zero, no carbon. I know. No it's po- all about control. No coal, no natural gas. Look, is- that, that, that has never been the actual goal. It's the stated goal, but it's all about control. That's, that's right. They want us poor, cold, mm. and in the dark. Yep. A- and that kind of ties back to the, the crowd strike IT outage. Mm. It are will they, happen again. Are, are they really that incompetent that they released an update that had not been tested or was it, or was the outage, in fact, a test? That's what I think. I think it was a test. And yeah. I'm sure many of you think that as well. So, yeah, keep some cash. Uh, keep food. If you cannot keep cash, try to get some food. If, if you're in a position where you're on a limited income, do what little you can. And Derek and I, for, for years, had on subscribe and save from Amazon mm-hmm. uh, beans. Yep. We now have beans coming out of our ears. <laughs> So we've got, if you ever need beans, we've got them. Mm -hmm. Um, But you can do something like that or just go to the, to the dollar store or some little, little grocery store where, you know, you can buy them inexpensively and buy two bags of beans every week. Beans, rice, things that you can, you can store on the shelf for a long term. You don't need to buy freeze dried stuff or stuff in buckets. Right. And you can, speaking of buckets, you can put buckets out to collect rainwater Mm -hmm. and just have some sort of a filter and you can make them there. There are YouTube videos online to teach you how to use charcoal and, and other things to do, make your own filter Mm -hmm. instead of buying really expensive ones. You've got the money, buy one. Yeah. A day is coming where the crowd strike thing will look like just a minor blip compared to what will happen when Mm -hmm. things really go down. So, um, yeah, it, 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 as you say, the the stated goal is to achieve net zero, but the real goal is is control to get us using less, well, you know, owning nothing and being happy about it. Well, that's what so, we were told. So, so the question, the question from the app gilberthouse.org slash app. You want to throw a question to Sharon or me? We've got sections on the app for that. By the way, um, someone asked a question, and I loved it. They asked if we were going to ever bring Sci Friday back, um, worrying that maybe we didn't own the rights to it. We do. Mm-hmm. We just don't have the time presently. We loved doing Sci Friday. Right. So right. yeah, we would, we, if we can, but right now we've been given the rights back to the Bible's greatest mysteries. Mm-hmm. So that we're thinking about doing again. We're trying to figure out a way to have another set in this barn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause we, we hadn't planned on it. So we'll need yeah. to rearrange some things, but I, uh, I think we can figure it out yeah. somehow. So there's that, um, uh, the, the question and I don't want to identify this person because it, it related to a, a personal situation yeah. that that person was in. Yeah. Um, but the question was, should we leave America? Given the turmoil the country is in, what may be a rather turbulent election cycle, we remember the hmm, fiery but mostly peaceful protests of 2017 immediately following the inauguration. <laughs> You can always go to Israel with us in November. It's just a couple of days after the election. Right. It'll get, get you out of town for a week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, uh, the Solidarity Mission. We didn't give the dates. November 7th through 13th. That's se- not, is it the 7th? 7th through 13th. Yeah. Okay. So when is the election? The 5th? Election is the 5th. Okay. So. Oh, the 5th. We always remember the 5th of November. It's Guy Fawkes Day. Oh, right. Right. Again, another fiery but mostly peaceful no, protest. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, um, we, uh, so the, the, this person was asking because of concern about not just the political situation, but the world's geopolitical situation with mm-hmm. NATO, which is dominated by the United States, continuing to poke the Russian bear. So did that person ask you or me? Um, I, I don't recall where I got it from. I think it was sort of directed at both of us. Should we leave America well, I'll give you because my of the potential for a, a nuclear conflict with Russia? And uh, I, I'm just adding to that the possibility of more civil unrest um, over the election that's coming up. Well, first of all, I would ask um, if indeed you feel that the Lord is telling you leave the United States, then where would you go? Do you speak another language? Do you have a skill set you can take to another country? Are you retired? Do you have the funds to go to another country? Because to move to another country, you often, for legal immigration, you often have to show that you have enough money to Mm -hmm. live on, that that country doesn't have to support you. Do you have a place to go? Can you rent a house? Can you buy a house? 
Uh, do you have school children? You would have to re- enroll in school. There are a lot of questions. Um, spiritually speaking, I think that, yeah, there are hard times ahead, but I think that's going to be worldwide. Right. So being in the United States and having an influence on the, the uh, uh, people around you, standing as a witness, providing, you know, in, in our case, you know, if, if our neighbors need these beans, we'll share our beans with you. Uh, having something you can share as you share the gospel message, to me, that, that's a reason for staying. Mm. I, I agree with you. Most other nations, surprisingly, are a little more particular about who they let in than the United States Very is. Very much. Yeah. So you have to ask that question. Can we support ourselves in this other place? Mm-hmm. We're in kind of a unique situation where we can do what we do pretty much anywhere. Yeah. But if but, the internet went down. Uh, it would make that a lot more difficult. It would make yeah. it very difficult. But we also know the Lord will provide. Mm-hmm. But as you say, there really aren't many other, if any, good options. I mean, for English speakers like like us, who uh, I, mean, I I've got not even rudimentary French as a, um, to fall back on I me, mean, you know, if it were necessary, I had to learn another language and was forced yeah. into it. Yeah, I probably could, but it's, it's, I have tourist for a week, German. Yeah. It would, I can ask my way for directions. I can ask where the bathroom is, things like that. I could get by, but frankly, most Europeans have some English. Right. There, there are only a handful of countries where we could probably get by. And I think that's true of most Americans. Mm-hmm. But again, you have to have some means of support and be able to demonstrate mm-hmm. that to uh, wherever you would plan to emigrate to. Now, if you're living in a big city and you're worried about, you know, return of some of those nasty riots, then um, if you have the wherewithal to move and you can take a skill set to another con- to another state, there are certain states that are frankly a little more friendly mm. to Christians. Right. We're in kind of a bubble here in the Ozarks, mm-hmm. and we, we are very thankful for that. Very yeah, thankful. Even when I go to St. Louis to visit our daughter, I feel like it, I've gone into a different country. Yeah, I know. She, she lives and works in a very progressive area. Yeah, it's very, very urban there. Um, here in Southwest Missouri, it is very, very conservative, mm-hmm. and you know, people that just help their neighbors. Mm-hmm. So that might be an option to consider. If you're concerned about that aspect of it, maybe look to move to a smaller town or a rural area with the internet connecting. Mm-hmm. Even, even us here in the rural Ozarks now, we've got passable internet. It's not uh, gigabit by any stretch, but it's, it's good enough. You can live a lot of places that uh, even 10 years ago would have been more difficult because of the lack of internet access in mm-hmm. parts of the country like this. When we first moved here, our internet was horrible. It was really yeah. bad, but so the Lord. You, you may gave consider us some that as stuff. an option rather than getting out of the United States entirely, because if the world does get embroiled in a global conflict, which, which is possible, I mean, China's been running military exercises with Belarus on the border of Poland and only 40 miles from the border with Ukraine. So if NATO keeps poking Russia and mm-hmm. Russia gets involved, they are allied with China. And they're in an economic union with India. I mean, Zelensky just got himself in trouble by criticizing Prime Minister Modi of India for going to Moscow. Yeah, I know, that was a mistake. Yeah. So there there won't be many places in this world, especially if you are a native English speaker, that are going to be better. I mean, England itself has the same kind of rampant immigration problems that we we are seeing here in the United States. So, you know, I, I guess the bottom line is, Pray as Christians, we are not given a spirit of fear and uh, just, you know, seriously consider your options and consider that perhaps maybe moving to a rural area or a smaller community might, might accomplish what you're trying to do. In my good words. So, well, we promised we would tell you other places we're going. We will, as we said earlier, be at the Go Therefore conference in uh, Brookville, Ohio uh, next weekend. Well, uh, starts on Friday. It does. And ends on Saturday night, Saturday, mm-hmm. Saturday evening. Uh, Derek will be preaching on Sunday morning at that same church if you want to stay over. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, that Sunday morning, I'll be sharing our experience from our previous Solidarity Mission to Israel in May. Yep. And showing some video clips and images from what we saw of what we saw to uh, kind of illustrate the point. 
So all day Friday, all day Saturday, and uh, other guest speakers like L.A. Marzulli, Pastor Carl Gallops, as you mentioned, Dr. Sherry Five and Dime, uh, <laughs> Pastor Paul Begley, <laughs> Dr. Greg Reed. Thanks, Kenny C., for that uh you know, you should actually, they figured that out too. Probably, um, yeah. You, you should probably go where I said it earlier, said the name earlier, and just, you know, overdub it. Five and dime. <laughs> uh, Tom Dunn will be there, and uh, Dr. Judd Burton will be uh, presenting via video. And he will be presenting after the dinner hour on Friday. So I will try now. Sorry, sir. So if Derek goes long, again, <laughs> bring a sandwich because you don't want to miss Judd. I was talking by Judd, with Judd Burton on the phone the other night, and he's going to be presenting on the time of the year that Jesus went to Caesarea Philippi. Oh. Because it coincided with a... a Februalia. Februalia, right. The uh, annual festival in the Roman calendar that dealt with um, the dead ancestors. That's big. It is. That's big. That, that is a... It, that, I've done research on that. Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, that's big. Significant. So Mm -hmm. it will be a wonderful gathering. If you can get there, please do. Um, Brookville, Ohio is just outside Dayton. uh, Friday and Saturday, the 26th and 27th. If you can't, streaming video is available. You can sign up for that online. Um, Go thereforeconference.com is the website. And uh, it, yeah, we're we're very excited to be part of this gathering. It's going to be like old home week. I know. Also, Derek is going to be in North Dakota. Pitchfork and Hoe Gathering. This will be at the Eagles Club in Valley City, North Dakota. I'll be speaking Friday and Saturday, September 6th and 7th. This, essentially, the whole gathering is like a farm and trade show for small, like homesteaders and small farm operations. Mm -hmm. Really great, you know, crafts and uh, food and other things there. Some presentations, workshops on best practices for small farmers. So let's get the city boy to come and talk to us. (laughs) But uh, North Dakota is the land of my ancestors, my uh, mother's true. side of the family. You grew up in Chicago, but you yep. are descended em- from farmers. Emigrated there in the late 19th century. So looking forward to that. Had a great time there last October. Looking forward to getting back and seeing them there again this year. Yeah, but then in early October, we're going to Idaho Falls, Idaho. I know. It's going to be wonderful. Looking forward to that. Uh, Jeannie and Mike Kerr asked me if I would be one of the speakers and I'll tell you what, it's Heidi Begley, myself, uh, um, Tracy Tennant. Tracy Tennant, yes, thank you very much. Uh, Leslie Johnson, Lisa Keys, Vicki Joy Anderson, yeah. uh, Sharon Cluck, and Sharon, Jennifer Crate. So it's going to be a, a great gathering of women speakers. This is a women's conference at, uh, gosh, what's the place where they're holding it? It's the Holiday Inn and Suites. Thank you very much for seeing that. Yeah, it's a nice facility in Idaho Falls, beautiful area of the country, and you can fly in, uh, so you don't have to drive all the way. Mm-hmm. We are going to fly. Derek, Derek gets to come with me. <laughs> I'm her plus one. I know. It's yeah. wonderful. So yeah, we would, we would, this is the first time they've done a women's conference, and so support them. I'll tell you what, Mike and Jeannie are hard workers, and they put their they, their savings, what little they had is long since gone because mm-hmm. they rarely break even on these conferences. Right. Rarely. Most of the time they owe money at the end of it mm-hmm. and they just eat that Yeah, because they love doing this. Right. So you find out more at, uh, go, not, I'm sorry, here, the watchmen.com is the, uh, the, the login for uh, information and registration for the Ignite Your Fire conference, the women's conference in October. And then in December, Christmas in Branson. I know, A yay. prophecy conference from Prophecy Watchers. L.A. Marzulli, Bill Salas, Billy Crone, Ken Johnson, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, uh, Patrick M. Wood, Doug Hershey, Brandon Holthouse, Josh Peck, Mondo Gonzalez, Gary Stearman. Um, I think Gary's going to be there. I don't see him on the poster now. Well, I'm so maybe sure I misspoke, be. but I know Gary talked about it. Olivier Melnick, who's a wonderful messianic uh, uh, speaker, just watched an interview with uh, Olivier and uh, John Haller recently. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, honored to be a part of that one. Uh, Terry James will be there as well. And uh, that will be December 5th through 8th at the Chateau in uh, Branson, the Chateau on the Lake, which is a beautiful facility. So, uh, Boy, and Christmas in Branson, there's so many things to do. I know. If uh, you want to bring the family, spend a few extra days, that would be a great 
holiday getaway, but mm-hmm. uh, just the conference itself will be just an amazing gathering. And in case you've been sitting there scribbling away, trying to write down all of these na- dates and places, you don't need to. Just get our app, go to the calendar portion of that, or go, or go to our website, gilberthouse.org slash calendar. Mm, yeah. It's all right there. And uh, I think that uh, covers everything we got Just through, about. The, the, through this year. Good, our Israel tour next spring, March 25th through April 3rd. Do, do you want to thank as well? We do want to thank everyone who's been praying for my niece, Sarah. Uh, those of you who are able, if you can, you know, help her just a little bit with her bills. She's finally uh, gotten a bill saying that they've been billed to the amount that is her copay. Now, beyond uh, okay. that, we're not sure how much they're going to pay towards anything. But at this point, she owes $50,000. Mm, mm, they don't have it. Mm-hmm. You know, like most of us, they don't. But if, if you know, 5,000 people gave $10 each, mm-hmm. I know that's asking a lot. But if you've got a dollar, if you've got $5, if you've got $10, if you've got more, you can help out Sarah today. The link for helping her, uh, her own PayPal, where it's not going through us. You can go through that at the link at gilberthouse.org. Sorry, gilberthouse.org slash hope for Sarah. Mm-hmm. There's also a big graphic you can click on at our website landing page. And if you just want to write her a check, that'd be great. And you can send it directly to her. That mm-hmm. information is also on that page. Right. Gilberthouse.org slash hope for Sarah, or just click the big banner at the top of gilberthouse.org. Uh, tomorrow morning, our uh, Gilbert House fellowship bible study as we continue working through the book of proverbs tomorrow evening on a view from the bunker it is the iron and myth crew although we were down a man oh yeah judd burton uh, had some technical issues could not log in but we talk about the nephilim oh finally yeah 30 episodes in and we finally say hey we haven't talked about the giants yet we sort of assumed everybody was on that on page there so uh brian godala and doug van dorn as we talk about and and me yes as the moderator of that Three Ring Circus, uh, talking about the Nephilim, and that'll be tomorrow night at vftb.net, or better yet, on our app, or our Roku, or our Apple TV channels. Awesome. Until next time, I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and for the guys working in the yard and the dogs in the house, bye-bye, everybody. PID Radio is produced by Gilbert House and released under Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. Follow us online, Twitter, at PID Radio, or the PID Radio page at Facebook. Join us each week for our online Bible study, the Gilbert House Fellowship, online at gilberthouse.org.